Ben Butler has been convicted of the murder of his six-year-old daughter, Ellie. It's undescribable. An undefined act of violence engulfed the life of an innocent young girl who was merely six years old. Who was this person who'd commit such an act? Join us as we delve into this gut-wrenching case. Together, we'll unravel its intricate details while looking into its devastating aftermath. It all started in South London between the couple Ben Butler and Jenny Gray. Jenny was an actress and was able to make quite a name for herself. Ben never had a steady job because of his excessive criminal record. He'd been accused of theft and robbery as well as intimidating witnesses. Ben experienced a prior run-in with the law regarding domestic violence against a former lover in March 2006. However, he soon met Jenny and their relationship developed quickly, and in just two weeks after they met, Jenny realized she was pregnant. On December 30th, 2006, a baby girl was born. The couple called her Ellie Butler. Ben and Jenny had not been officially married until then and had known one another for just a few months. The two didn't get married for most of their life. Ben would constantly travel to his partner's apartment to see their child. The couple seemed determined to work together and share the responsibility of parenting their child. However, this happy family wouldn't last long. Just a few months after Ellie's birth, when Ben was taking care of Ellie, she suffered burns on her head and hands. Ben rushed her to the hospital, claiming it was an accident that he placed a heater close to her and she laid down and started to burn her own body. Jenny ignored the incident and acknowledged that it was just an accident. Just one week after her last hospitalization, Ellie returned to the hospital. Somehow, Ellie was reported to have an injured head that caused blood loss within her brain and around her eyes, often a sign caused by shaken baby syndrome. Ben claimed Ellie was pale since Jenny dropped her off at his house. Ellie appeared unwell and then collapsed on the floor after a couple of hours with him. He was frightened and rang an ambulance. She's laying there. She's not responding. I'm breathing, but she's she's just like she's. Ben felt that the emergency services were taking far longer than they should have. He called his friend, who had a car, and they took her to St. Hospital. The hospital noted something dubious regarding each accident. While forensic pathologists described Ellie's injuries as being similar to those that would have been sustained in a car crash, forensic pathologist Nat Carey used digital CT scans and X-ray data to create two 3D printed replicas of Ellie's skull, which were then presented to the court. From the observations made, severe damage to the head was visible. Social services were brought to the hospital once it became clear to medical professionals what they were dealing with. Police arrived shortly after and arrested Ben for questioning on suspicion of harming Ellie. Soon after, it became clear that Ellie was in danger at her father's house. How could a man inflict so much pain on his own daughter? Truly despicable people like Ben exist between us to this day. A fact-finding committee concluded that Ben was at fault for his nine-month-old daughter's burns and brain injury. It was time to choose who Ellie's guardian would be. Jenny was quickly eliminated because she was her mother, and it was speculated that she might have supported the child abuse. The judge favored Jenny's parents, Neil and Linda, giving them temporary custody. Ellie Butler spent a wonderful time with her grandparents. Neil and Linda Gray were the most idyllic parents one could wish for. She opened up to them and talked all the time. Neil and Linda Gray fostered an environment where Ellie's talents and interests could flourish. Her grandfather said she loved painting and wanted to be an artist. She meticulously crafted cards for her grandparents to show her gratitude and love. Ellie found comfort and safety with Neil and Linda, knowing they loved and protected her unconditionally. She lived with her grandparents for over five years, but Ellie's parents soon demanded her back. They sued the grandparents and brought social services into the matter. They wanted the custody of Ellie back and even proved that the previous finding against Ben was wrong. Justice Hogg in the High Court Family Division ruled that Ellie's parents had been exonerated of causing her injuries. The grandparents fought for Ellie, yet they lost their little granddaughter no matter how hard they tried. Ellie herself was also adamant about not leaving her grandparents. However, being a five-year-old girl, no one heeded her words. What was going to happen now? For the record, no one knows what happened to Ellie when she was with her parents. Behind closed doors, Ellie lived in darkness with a toxic family. Neil talks about one of his meetings with Ellie after she returned to her parents. After spending 11 months with her parents, she got to meet her grandparents one more time. On May 5th, 2013, the grandparents got together with Ellie, her younger sister, and her parents in an establishment in the area. 
Gray recalls that Ellie's face was painted with the colors of Butler's football club, Everton. Gray claims he saw bleeding under the face paint and various scratches and bruises across Ellie's body. On another visit, Ellie was with her mother. They met Jenny, Ellie, and her younger sister at a McDonald's in Sutton for half an hour. He reported that he could sense the fear in her eyes just by looking at her. Moreover, he said that her eyes were sunken, she was underweight, and she looked sad and terrified. Linda observed bruises on her face. The grandparents recalled that she would always be covered in face paint in most of the meetings they had with their granddaughter. We can only imagine this little girl's horrible life being subjected to torture day in and day out while the authorities stood by and watched. On October 28, 2013, Ellie was reportedly discovered unconscious by her parents and immediately taken to a local hospital, hoping that medical staff could revive her. Unfortunately, their efforts proved futile and Ellie was declared deceased. Autopsy results revealed that Ellie Butler suffered catastrophic head injuries, which contributed directly to her death. I said, because one day you may have blood on your hand. And little did I know, 10 months later, Ellie passed, well, was killed by the parents. Thus, a beautiful young life was snuffed out. Clearly, she'd be in a better place now. It was later found that her own father was responsible for all the violence on her. Ellie was murdered 11 months after she was returned to the care of Butler and her mother. Legal proceedings revealed further shocking details regarding Ben Butler and Ellie's family life such as previous violence and abuse that revealed her dangerous environment. Jurors heard how this couple's toxic and dysfunctional relationship developed into extreme verbal and likely physical abuse, leading to the murder of the six-year-old girl. They even attempted to stage an elaborate cover-up, washing potentially contaminated clothes and removing Ellie's blood. It became evident that Ben's actions stemmed from a pattern of control and aggression which tragically culminated with him ending Ellie's life. Ben Butler was eventually found guilty in court proceedings for Ellie's murder by Judge Linda Dobbs. She also said that, in her opinion, there could be a chance that further deaths may occur if the communication between child support agencies does not improve. Dobbs said the full inquest would be an Article 2 complaint, meaning the state's role in Ellie's death would be examined. Were there failures on the part of the authorities, agencies and individuals to protect Ellie's life and prevent her death, said Dobbs a question she asked that was on everyone's mind. Ultimately, Ben received life imprisonment with a minimum of 23 years, sparking debate surrounding child protection issues and decision-making processes within family court systems. This also draws particular attention to comprehensive assessments ensuring vulnerable children's well-being. So, why did Ben kill his daughter? Did he have psychological issues? One theory offered during this hearing suggested he killed Ellie to assert control and authority within their family unit. Moreover, evidence pointed toward domestic violence as an indicator. Court heard testimonies that revealed that Ellie's parents had an antagonistic relationship and Butler had anger issues, leading him to previously be convicted for shaking Ellie as an infant resulting in severe brain injuries. This was later overturned on appeal, leading to the decision to return her to her parents' care. One of the leading causes of Ellie's tragic outcome was her return to her parents despite previous concerns and evidence of violence. She would have enjoyed an amazing life had she stayed with her grandparents. I'm sure they tried their best to save her from the horrifying situation that befell her. Ellie's mother, Jenny Gray, faced charges related to child cruelty and perverting justice. As such, she was found guilty and received a 42-month prison sentence due to her actions during this tragic event. Reports indicate she initially supported Ben Butler and stood with him through the legal proceedings. Jenny Gray supported Ben based on a few factors, including their shared history and emotional attachment. At their trial, the court heard evidence and testimonies that shed light on their deteriorating relationship and the events leading up to Ellie's death. Gray admitted attempting to cover up for her partner, but said it was only to protect an innocent man. This eye-opening incident of Ellie's case resulted in widespread scrutiny and criticism of the family court in Britain, specifically their decision to return her to her parents' care, despite concerns and evidence of violence prompting questions about its decision-making processes and child protection protocols. And that's all we have from the tragic case of Ellie Butler. If you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing. Feel free to recommend us any other cases you want us to document. Thanks for watching and as always, stay safe out there.